Welcome back. In this video, this is going to be going over the multiple choice questions one through eight for the chi squared portion of the review. This will be found in page four, five, six of this handout, and you can access this handout here if you don't have it at home. Let's go. Number one, given the data below, in conducting a test of association be between gender and grade, what is the expected count for the number of males who earn a grade of B? Well, if you remember that the row total times the column total divided by the overall total will get you the expected count, then it's easier to actually just calculate the row totals, column totals, and overall totals and uh, find the ones that work for this formula, plug them in, and get your answer. In this case, it's going to be around 36.75. You just take your row total times the column total divided by your overall total. And that'll give us uh, an answer of approximately 36.8, which would be your answer. But let's say in a panic, you forgot all that information. But maybe you remember how to use your matrix menu. Maybe you remember how to use your chi-square test and get that information. So if you have that in your matrix, go to your test, go to the chi-square test, run the test, get your expected in matrix B, Go to your matrix menu, go down to matrix B, click enter, and you scroll to the correct one where males and uh, males and uh, B, grade B, match. You're going to see that that is 36.75. So 36.8 would be your approximate answer. So your answer is going to be 36.75, which is approximately 36.8. Any questions? Moving on. Question two, a study was done to determine if the method of instruction, either lecture or discussion, depended on the type of class which was being taught. 20 art classes, 17 math classes, and 25 science classes were observed. The method of instruction, discussion, or lecture was recorded. Each of the following best describes the, re the relationship between method of teaching and type of class. So we have, it looks like a breakdown, um, arts, math, science, discuss, lecture, one sample, so this is going to be a chi-squared test of association. And we want to look at to see if there's some sort of relationship here. So letter A, there appears to be no relationship since the number of classes and the number of lecture classes was exactly the same. Well, that's not true. I mean, they're, yes, they're both the number of classes that are lecture and discussion are the same, but look at the breakdown. If you look at your arts, there's a lot more lecture in arts than there is math. There's more discussions in math, more lectures in arts. There's more discussions in science than there are lectures. So there is some sort of relationship. So we can't just say there's no relationship just because the totals here are the same. That's not going to work. Um, letter B, no association can be determined since the number of art, math, and science were not exactly the same. That's also not true. Just because those numbers were not the same doesn't mean no association can be determined. In fact, um, they don't have to be exactly the same. They can be off a little bit. What we're looking for is some sort of pattern. Do you notice that there seem to be more for one than there are for the other? If there was truly no association, they'd be somewhat the same, somewhat similar. But we'd have to run a test to determine how far off they would be. We're not talking about precise numbers here. So C, so B is not the correct answer. Letter C, there appears to be an association since the art classes were less likely to use discussion than either the math or science. Well, let's look at that question. There appears to be an association since the art classes were less likely to use discussion than math or science. Well, that is true. There's way less discussion here than there is for the math. There's a lot, uh, there's a lot more discussion in math way less discussion for the arts. There's, a, there's a, even a lot more discussion in science than there is in the arts. So there seems to be an association here, um, whereas the, the, the math and science preferred the lectures the least, and whereas the arts preferred the discussions the least. I seem to think that's true. So I'm going to say that's true, but let's go over why D and E are not true. D, there appears to be an association since the number of math and science classes is greater than the number of arts classes. Well, again, it leads back to these numbers here. Um, the numbers that are uh, of math classes, just because there are 
17 math classes. And well, since because there are 17 math classes combined with 25 science classes, that is more than arts, but that doesn't have to do with the association, right? It's talking about proportional. So that's really bad wording there. We're going to take that out. And letter E, a measure of association cannot be determined from these data. Well, that can't be the case in this in this case because there seems to be a pattern here. There's you're looking at less discussions here and less lectures over here. So there seems to be some sort of association. I don't know if there's enough evidence of it, but based on the the date the the table, there is an association. So E is going to be um, not true. So it looks like C is going to be our answer here. All right, let's move on to number three. At a certain high school, a simple random stand-up was taken by 52 11th and 12th graders, uh, their political affiliation. The following two-way table was established. If a chi-square test of independence were performed on these data, what would the corresponding degrees of freedom be? The formula, which is not provided to you, is just the number of columns uh, minus one and the number of rows minus one. So if you plug in the Republican, Democrat, Independent, 11th grade, 12th grade, you're going to notice that for the rows, it's just going to be three minus one. So that's going to be two. And then 11th and 12th grade, that's two. So two minus one, that's going to be one. So two times one. And that's going to give you two. So your degrees of freedom is going to simply be two in this case. If you want to back it up running the test, throw them in the matrix, run the chi-squared test. And it'll give you your DF right there. All right, question three is done. Let's look at question number four. Four, a survey was conducted among 340 high school girls in which they were polled regarding whether they were right-handed or left-handed and whether or not they played a musical instrument. The table below displays the results of that survey. If the likelihood of a girl playing an instrument is independent of left or right-handedness, what is the expected number in the cell representing right-handed girls who play musical instrument? Well, expected number can be calculated using the row totals, column totals, and overall totals. So if you look at the right hand, the play musical instrument and the overall 340, 310 times 92 divided by 340 is going to give you the correct answer, which is about 83.88 or 83.9. Of course, if you forget, put it in your matrix. It's a two by two. Run the test. Your expected will be in... Um, matrix B, so go back into your matrix menu, open that up, and find the correct one. And we're going to look at the one that says 83.88, since we're talking about this one right here. That's your expected. It's going to be 83.9. All right, uh, next question, number five. Number five, in a study to compare movie preferences among different age groups, a chi-squared statistic was used. If a small value of the test statistic is obtained, it suggests that A, the null hypothesis may be rejected since the differences between the observed and expected values are relatively large. Let's visit the chi-squared statistic so we can, uh, uh, distribution so we can kind of see what that means. I think the formula sheet's a really good visual for this. So when you look at your your very back page, you'll see this uh, right skewed chi-squared statistic. And remember, the p-value is this shaded area over here. Now, it's going to get smaller as the chi-squared statistic goes further to the right. So the larger this chi-squared statistic is, the smaller the p-value is. And so we're going we're gonna to be more likely to reject the null hypothesis with a large chi-squared statistic. If you have a small chi-squared statistic, we're more likely to fail to reject the null hypothesis. So keep that in mind as we answer this question. The null hypothesis may not be rejected since the differences between the observed and expected values are relatively large. Well, in this case here, we're more likely to not reject the null if the chi-squared is small because the p-value will be high. So we're going to cross that one out. B, 
The null hypothesis may be rejected since the differences between the observed and expected values are relatively large. The null hypothesis may be rejected since the difference between the observed and expected values are relatively large. Reading the question stem carefully says, if a small value of the test statistic is obtained, if a small value, so that would kind of contradict part B. That test statistic being small would not lead us to believe our observed minus expected values are relatively large, okay? That would be a large test statistic. So that contradicts that. C, the null hypothesis may be rejected since the differences between the observed and expected values are relatively small. Well, that doesn't contradict it, but the null hypothesis may be rejected would not be the case here. If the differences are relatively small, we would assume that the null hypothesis most likely would not be rejected. So again, that's not really going to be a, a, a well-worded answer. The null hypothesis may be rejected if the chi-squared statistic is large, because you'll have a small p-value. But in this question, it says, if a small value of the test statistic is obtained. So again, we can't go through that logic. So letter D. The null hypothesis may not be rejected since the differences between the observed and expected values are relatively small. So again, for this one here, that's the answer. Um, what, what you want to think about is small chi-squared test statistic. Equals large p-value. And that means fail to reject null. That's the right wording, okay? The null hypothesis may be rejected since the differences between the observed and expected values are going to be relatively small. In other words, if your chi-squared statistic is over here, if it's small, then you're going to have a large p-value. And just... I'm going to bring this Desmos graph up just for a visual again. The, the higher that chi-squared statistic goes, the smaller your p-value gets. The smaller that is, in other words, the, the differences between your observed and expected being smaller, it's going to be a larger p-value. So we'd fail to reject it because our numbers just aren't off, right? So we don't have evidence to conclude that there is a difference in the, the variables or the distribution or whatever we're measuring. All right, I'm done with you have your answer. Question number six. Tire Today offers four major brands of tires to its customers. In order to determine whether the tires are equally preferred, 200 customers are randomly selected and offered each type of tire at the same price. Results show 43 by brand A, 61 by brand B, 55 by brand C, and 41 by brand D. E. Is there sufficient evidence to conclude that the customers have preferences between the brands? Use a significance level of 5%. This is going to be a chi-squared goodness of fit test. Um, you know this is going to be one sample, one variable, which is brand attire. Um, we're going to go through and, and put our observed in L1, expected in L2. Our expected in this case would just be 50, 50, 50, 50, since uh, our null, we're assumed that there is no brand preference, so we're that there is no difference between the brands. So it's just the same number for brand A, B, C, and D. So we're going to go into our stat menu and... Go to L1 and L2 and list out your observed in L1. I wouldn't do this one by hand if you don't have to do any free response. Throw those in there. Run the chi-squared goodness of fit test, stat test up a few times. L1, L2. Remember, your degrees of freedom is going to be the number of categories minus 1. So 4 minus 1 is 3, which happens to be already there for me. Go down to calculate, and you're going to get the following values. Your test statistic is 5.52, and your p-value is 0 0.13. So if you get your p-value, uh, your, your chi-squared at 5.52 and your p-value of 0.137, we, we are going to fail to reject. Um, but what that means, of course, is that, th that we do not have a sufficient evidence in this case. So your, your list here, you're gonna say, uh, 
is there sufficient evidence to conclude that the customers have preferences between the brands? No. Um, and looking at your answers, it has to do with, in this case, the chi-squared are what are listed in your answer choices. So chi-squared is not 0 0.98, 1.42. Chi-squared is 5.52. So we have to match that up with um, you know, the 5.52 representing your chi-squared. We're going to say no because we fail to reject, so we do not have sufficient evidence. And that'll help you with your answer. Easier answer. Next question. A random sample of 100 people was, was asked to state his or her gender in favor ice cream flavor. The results appear in the table below. A, a chi-squared test is used to determine the null hypothesis that gender and preferred ice cream flavor are independent. Which of the following statements is correct? Oh, we're gonna have to run this test and we're gonna throw that in your calculator. So use your matrix menu and run the chi-squared test of independence. I'll pa pause the video so you can do it before you check the answer. Put those matrices in, run the test, stat test, chi-squared test. Go down to calculate, get your p-value and your chi-squared test statistic. Now link your p-value to the significance level. Of course, if you see a small p-value like that, we would want to reject the null hypothesis, but it does still have to do with your alpha level. So if you if this is going to be less than, well, it's less than 5% for sure, but in this case here, that would mean reject, right? Not fail to reject. So we're not going to do A. Um, do not reject the null hypothesis at the 1% level. 0 0.0077 is also less than 1%. But again, that means reject, not fail to reject. So, of course, we're going to mark, mark out B as well. So we have our three rejection choices. Um, 0 0.0077 is less than 0 0.01, so that is true. Reject the null hypothesis at 0 0.005. Well, 0 0.0077 is not less than 0 0.005. In fact, it's greater than 0 0.05, 0 0.005. So that is not true. And then it's also greater than 0 0.001. So 0 0.0077 is greater than 0 0.001. And so we're going to not conclude that. We're going to reject it based on the fact that this is true. C is going to be your answer. Our last question in this video. Thank you for being so patient. Um, number eight, a die was rolled 24 times with the following results. A goodness of fit test is to be used to test the null hypothesis that the die is fair. At a significance level of 1%, the value of the chi-squared and the decision reached is. Well, think about your observed and expected. If it was a fair die, then there would be four rolls expected for each one if we're going to total up to 24 rolls. So using your observed and expected, run the chi-squared goodness of fit test in your calculator. Once you put them in L1 and L2, stat test, chi-squared GOF test, degree of freedom will be five since we're bumping it down from six rolls to one. And your chi-squared is 12.5. Your p-value is 0 0.0285. Let's write that down. Now we're used to using 5% as our default alpha level. This, this time we're using 1%. So with our p-value, even though it's small, it's actually greater than 1%. So we are gonna fail to reject the null hypothesis. Um, so we'll fail to reject the null hypothesis because it's bigger than that alpha 1%. So your chi-squared is 12.5, fail to reject. That's the end of this video, guys. Thanks for watching.